OK. Um, so ladies and gentlemen, what we are going to practice doing, if you guys remember, I had an equation. I was looking into taking an equation in the form y equals a times x minus h squared plus k. Well, the problem is, once we have this, we can easily find the vertex, right? Easy. hk. Done. But the problem is, we have a function or an equation in ax squared plus bx plus c. Now, what I want you guys to understand is these both provide parabolas. They're both going to be the same graph. The only difference, and even if you were to, even if these had numbers and you expanded these numbers, what I want you guys to understand is we are still going to have x squared. All right? x would still be squared in both these examples. However, there is, there is something that is a, um, um, that's different about them being squared. Here, I just have x being squared. Whereas here, I have x minus h is being squared. They're still going to result when you expand them in having x squared. But the important thing I want you to understand is this is what we call a binomial squared. This is just a monomial squared, or a term. So what's important to basic difference to go from standard to vertex is we have to create a binomial squared. We have to create a binomial squared. And what's important about that, is, or what's, imp what's understand about a binomial squared is how do we create binomial squares? Well, binomial squares come from factoring perfect square trinomials. And if you guys remember perfect square trinomials like x squared plus 4x plus 4, that is a perfect square trinomial. Why is that a perfect square trinomial? Because it's the factors are exactly the same, x plus 2 times x plus 2. So what we're going to do is we're going to create perfect square trinomials that have the exact same factors because then we can rewrite them as factors squared. Follow me a little bit? So there's really basically, ladies and gentlemen, a step-by-step -step process for this. So if you guys can just follow along, I'm going to do two of them. And then we, I'll let you guys do two of them. And then um, we'll get to some, another problem here. So step number one is actually I'm going to erase this. I'm going to write my steps down. Step number one, the first thing you want to do is group your quadratic and your linear term. Group them. Don't worry about the last, your constant. Just group your quadratic and your linear term. Second, factor so your a is equal to 1. Notice I didn't say factor out the greatest common factor, because they always are going to have x in common. I only want you to factor if a, which is the coefficient of your quadratic term, is not 1. But a is 1 in this case, so I don't have to worry about that, right? Step number three, obtain your perfect square trinomial. Well, how do you obtain a perfect square trinomial? What you do is you do b divided by 2 squared. So your b, remember this is ax squared plus bx plus c. b is negative 6. So I take negative 6 divided by 2 squared. So negative 6 divided by, neg divided by 2 is negative 3 squared equals 9. Does everybody follow me so far? Yes? Step number four, add and subtract. This one sometimes, um, where did my brown go? This is my brown marker. All right, whatever. Um, this one kind of gets some students. So we have a function which is f of x equals, parentheses, x squared minus 6x. And now I'm going to add a 9. Then it's plus 2. And now they're saying to subtract a 9. 
Now, remember, when you're doing this, you need to add the 9 inside the parentheses, and then you need to subtract it outside the parentheses. Why are we adding and subtracting? Because think about it this way again. If I have x plus 3 equals 7, if I said to go ahead and solve for this, you would apply the subtraction property of Mr. McLogan? Yes. I need mean, Megan Cusack to the front office to check out, please. OK. Thank you. Uh, Megan, you're going to want to get the homework. Do you have somebody you can get the homework from? OK. So you're going to want to use the property of equality. OK? And there will also be videos up later, too, as well for you. So you're going to use the property of equality. Whatever you do on one side, you have to do on the other side. Well, the same thing, ladies and gentlemen. If I had x is equal to 0, I could also, or if I had x is equal to 5, I could also write this as, um, no, let's just say, if I had x equals x, I could also say x plus 3 minus 3 is still equal to x. So you subtract whatever you do on one side, you do on the other. Or you could also think of this, adding and subtracting on the same side doesn't really do anything, correct? Yes? You still have equivalent equations. So that's why I add and subtract. But why did I add to the inside? Because this is now a perfect square trinomial. This can be factored. The factored form of this is x minus 3 times x minus 3, or x minus 3 squared. 2 minus 9 is negative 7. Now, can I identify my vertex? h comma k. Remember, it's x minus h. So my vertex is now going to be um, 3 comma negative 7. My axis of symmetry is x equals h, so that's x equals 3. My domain is going to be all real numbers. But my range is going to be different. If you guys remember the parent graph over there, how low did the graph go? 0. But now what has happened to my graph? My graph has now been shifted down 7. So now the lowest point is going to be negative 7. So my range is from negative 7 to infinity. Yes? Would negative 7 be included? Yes, it would be included. Thank you. Does that make sense? Kind of, a little bit? So I'll do the next one a little bit quicker because I still have one more thing I need you guys to do.